Pump and drive. Peterson gets the completion. Lakey Peterson. I grew up in Santa Barbara, California. I'm currently living in between Australia and Carpentria, but our primary home is in Carpentria, which is kind of a small suburb uh, just outside of Santa Barbara. I would say the three best things about Santa Barbara Carp area are one, the restaurants, the food, um, and the culinary experience is amazing in Santa Barbara in particular. And then we have gorgeous mountains uh, with amazing hiking and running trails and mountain biking and it's just it's a really beautiful scene our mountains kind of meet the ocean and then I would say the ocean and the beaches um, when the surf is good it's great but it's a bit few and far between but I would still put that in this. Growing up as a kid I would say I, I probably looked up to Dane Reynolds the most um, just out at Rincon and just surfing around the local area. I think, you know, when I was a junior, he was really in his prime of being on tour and making crazy surf edits and um, kind of peaking. And so to be able to watch Dane every day at Rincon was such a pleasure. Um, but we have a lot of great surfers from this area. So there was a lot of inspiring performances when I was growing up. Okay. What's up, everybody? We are at Channel Islands right now. I am going to go into the factory and chat to Britt Merrick, my shaper. Channel Islands has been a part of my life, my entire career, pretty much. And um, it's pretty cool. They were founded in Santa Barbara, where I grew up and am from and live still today. So it's like a big family to me. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go in. I'm gonna speak to Britt just about my boards at the moment and what I'm liking, what I'm not liking and what I kind of want to work on. I'm gonna bring in some boards back there. I have some that are like magic and then some that are not so magic. So we're gonna kind of go over that and some footage and uh, you guys can see the factory. So it's gonna be fun. Here's the front door. They surprised me with this the other day. Thanks guys. Surfboards, they're actually been the busiest year ever for CI. This is Britt's shaping room. Britt might have the cleanest shaping room in the world. Yeah, it's been awesome working with Britt. I think I work so well with him because he's such a receptive uh, shaper and person. He really wants the true, honest feedback, whether it's good or bad, about the boards he's making me. And I really feel like he is um, in it you know, for me to, to do my best and perform my best, and he really wants me to thrive. You know, his dad's obviously Al Merrick, who's probably the most legendary surf shaper of all time, and Britt learned from his dad, learned from Al, and, and so I think he's just really grown into his own the past few years and his shaping and what he's taken, you know, from his dad, and then kind of brought that into a new school um, balance, and so my boards have, gone through the roof the last few years. I started working with Britt in 2018 and you can see in my performances alone that was really when I started to um, you know win more events and be more consistent and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Britt's been shaping my boards. What I think I'm hearing you say is like right here it doesn't always come around as quickly as it should. Yes. Okay so sometimes what my mind goes to is the fin can't right the way the fins are Tilt it out. Yeah. It means it's a little straighter outward. 
which could very much lend itself to it not fitting in that curve. That looks fast, it was See how I can just yeah. turn it like so sharp? Generally with ordering boards, I will just go into the factory and chat with Britt and kind of see what I need, what we're aiming for, and sit down and tell them, all right, let's order 258, 159. Hawaii's coming up, let's get some bigger boards. Um, so I kind of have the luxury of going into the factory, ordering my equipment hands-on, and knowing what I'm gonna get um, just because they're right down the road. It's a little, it, it's almost a little snappier out of the lip. It is. Makes sense, right? How we're talking about it's a more on top of the water thing. Yeah. Right. So that makes sense that when you go and you hit the lip, that tail just releases and comes around. This is the glassing room. This is where the team boards are. Boards are not ready. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can still stages. Oh, Sage, that. you got a good board here. <laughs> In general, uh, males are going to have a little more power to push a board around. Am I going to get in trouble for saying that? <laughs> it is 2021. You're not going to get in trouble. We all know it's true. Men have more muscle. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> anyway. So I, I, do a thing, I do a few things to try to make the board a little more responsive um, with, with less effort and a little more forgiving. A big portion of that is just the front rails. So like on your boards, yeah. the front rails are a lot softer. And the rails are a little rounder, you know, we're always talking about how you like that, that round rail. Yeah. So it's just a very forgiving sort of rail, uh, but at the same time, it's responsive. And then sometimes uh, I just try to make the back of the board have a little more lift and be a little more on top of the water mm -hmm. because there might be not, it's just a little helpful. You don't have to like just animal off the tail so hard to get like that pop in that projection. Yeah. So someone like Dane is gonna bend the blank way more, mm. right? And like get the blank to load up and spring. Yeah. But he's gonna weigh almost 200 pounds. You're gonna be just over 100 pounds. Yeah. So like yeah. there's a difference there in the way that the materials are responding. So I'll try to compensate with that in the shape a little bit. But if you and Dane were the same size, you'd kick his butt. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that Dane? Came from him, not from me. <laughs> I feel like I'm in so much show. You're talking about genders. I, I think that for sure there's boards. It's a both end. There's for sure boards that work for the vast majority of people. But but we kind of got to break it out in, in their approach, right? So if we're just talking high performance short boards or like a standard conventional short board, then I for sure think there's a board that will work well for most people. Yeah. And I think a good board is a good board, period. And a bad board is a bad board. Then when we get to uh, what's not most people, right? Like yourself, like top surfers. Yeah. Then it's like so many nuances that make such big differences. Like when we were just going through your boards, yeah. in my mind, I'm juxtaposing all these things to the other surfers that I'm working with. And I'm realizing like, oh, okay, she likes that. He definitely doesn't like that. This guy wants that. That's gotta be different than what she wants. So it starts to get really complicated but fun. Yeah. For me, that's the most exciting part of that. Like it's rad to be able to make a board that works for most surfers. That's awesome and that's really important. Yeah. But like the challenging, really fun, sort of geeky stuff is like, okay, what are the differences between Sage and Lakey? Yeah. And Nikki. And there's differences. Yeah. And then what's the difference between Lakey and Seabass? Yeah. And what's the difference between Seabass and Parker? Yeah. Like that kind of stuff is super fun and involved. So yeah. it's a both and. Okay.